Damn it. It's completely dead. I'm the assistant for Dr. Styles. I'm the new assistant. Yes. I'm the new assistant for Dr. Styles. Oh, God. I'm the new assistant for Dr. Styles. I can't believe what I did last night. I need to get out of here before they figure out who I really am. I need to find Houdini first. Houdini! Oh no! Houdini! Where did you go, you silly rabbit? The first thing I need to do is to find Houdini. And I know he's not in my backpack. Poor thing has to travel in there when I ride my bike. That's the last place he'd go with a nice big room to explore. Houdini likes to climb into beds, but he's not in this one. There's something odd about that plant. Houdini! There you are! Are you scared? Or just up to your usual tricks, you furball you? I was worried! Stay put for at least 10 minutes, will you, Who? You poor thing, being dragged all over creation. We have to leave again soon, but I'll get you some food and water before we go. Hey, Mom and Dad. Looks like the rain didn't hurt you. That's cool. I still have some Houdini goodies left. That rabbit eats better than I do. Houdini's water bottle. Unfortunately, it's empty. Amazing considering how soaked I got last night. Yum! Nice, cool water. There you go. The hard stuff. Don't overdo it now. You never could hold your carrots. I need to go see if I can figure out where we are. You'll have a bit longer to be warm and snug. Enjoy it while you can. Nothing but trees out this way. I need to figure out where I am. I better take all the basic stuff from my bag with me. You never know. A letter from the foster care department back in D.C. I don't need to take it. I'm almost done reading it. Trey Gothic. I don't need to carry it around, though. 
My first magic book. The tricks are kind of juvenile, but the basic techniques are timeless. I never go anywhere without it. A towel is the most massively useful thing a hitchhiker can have. A girl traveling alone has to have more than a few tricks up her sleeve. All I have is five pounds. I should never have bought that piece of crap bike in Liverpool. It wiped me out. The Daedalus Club London. I will get there, one way or another. A clean, crisp deck of cards is one of the necessities of life. Hmm, that's a great bed. Too bad it was just for one night. I need to get out of here before they figure out I'm an imposter. But first, I need to find a map, or bus schedule, or something so I can figure out where I'm going. That's probably another bedroom. I better not open it. The occupant might get annoyed. Those gargoyles look like they were taken from an old building or something. Some dusty old armor in there. Looks like a monk or Quasimodo post-surgery. Weird painting. A woman and an owl. I like it. Pretty surreal. Hmm. Looks like it might be another bedroom. I don't think I'll go there. Not a soul. Pretty quiet, too. She's beautiful. Kind of a Grace Kelly type. Wonder who she is. Look at that statue of a veiled woman. I have no idea what it's supposed to mean, but it's sinister as hell. I love it. That's not something you'd want to run into while stumbling upstairs in the dark. All these friendly faces around here are freaking me out. I better find a map or letter or something that tells me where I am and how I get to the nearest town. It says, for the new assistant, hopefully by the time they figure out I'm not that person, I'll be long gone. I hear someone in there. I better not. God, you could feed the House of Representatives at this table. Some people have this kind of money. Then there are the rest of us. That velvet's a bit worn. Bet those chairs have been in this house a long time. Cool, Candelabra. All I need is a nightgown and a stormy night and I could play Jane Eyre. Stuffed owls. Adds a nice fresh from the field vibe to dinner. Wow, those are up there. I think they're Viking heads. These watercolors are good, but I'd say homegrown. Someone in the family must be an artist. L plus D, live and die? Laurel and Darty? A couple in a boat, kind of symbolic of a relationship. Except if it were one of my relationships, we'd be adrift in a storm in the middle of the ocean. China and silver, fancy.
I can see the long drive I came up last night. The road is still there. That's a good thing. I think I noticed a plaque yesterday. I should have a look. Center for Cognitive Abnormality Research? And this seemed like such a good idea last night. That tower looks strange standing by itself like that. It's almost like a miniature or replica. I love all this old gothic stuff around here. Neat house. I stuck my bike in there last night. I'll probably ditch it. It'll cost too much to fix it, and it's a piece of junk anyway. Damn it! I'll have to leave it and find a bus or train to London. I spent the last of my cash on that piece of crap. I could make a run for it in the car, but I'd probably be busted before I'd gone 20 miles. It looks like it could start raining again at any minute. Just my luck. I need to find a map or something. I have no idea where the nearest bus stop is. Cool house. A bit creepy, but I kind of like that. There's no one I can call. I don't know a soul here. And I can't call a repair shop because I don't have any money. Odd place for a stereo. Maybe it calms down the patients at mealtime. There are a lot of CDs in here, but no maps or addresses. Someone must read a lot. Someday, I'll have a library. It doesn't look like anyone's used that fireplace in ages. You know, this house is downright creepy. And I'm an ex-goth. I know creepy. Dr. David Stiles, neurobiology. Hope he finds the assistant he's looking for. Nice couple. They look happy. Annoyingly perfect, maybe, but happy. It's locked. I take it the patients have to wait a long time around here. Lovely. Just what I want to see when I'm waiting in a doctor's office. Are these some of the doctor's patients? 
Um, interesting. There's no, you are here on the globe, unfortunately. Looks like family photos. Nothing of use to me in there. Ooh, I could really use a bit of that. Even 20 pounds. I'm stone broke. But it's the magician's creed. Never take cash or other valuables. I just can't. That computer is ancient. It might as well be an abacus. There are no maps or bus schedules lying around. Not even an address. Uh-oh. There you are. I was just going to see if you was awake. Oh, hi. You aren't sneaking out on us, are you? Me? Nuh-uh. Well, come and get your breakfast. I've got eggs, porridge, toast and ham. Be a shame to let it go cold. No shit? I mean, thanks. God, I'm starving. I guess if they aren't onto me by now, another half an hour won't hurt. Head, dear. Don't be shy about it. Mm, it smells amazing. I didn't know how you took your eggs, so I made them the way I like them. But I can do them however you like starting tomorrow. I'm not picky. Ta. One way's easy as another. People need a good breakfast, I always say. Oh my god. These are the best eggs I've ever tasted. <laughs> well now, himself does like them fresh. We've got a farmer drops them off every few days. Bit peckish, are you? What do they feed you over there at Oxford? Oxford? Um, the usual. And I never saw anyone in my life as cold, wet and tired as you last night. Hope he didn't walk all that way. There's a bus stop just down the road, no more than 20 yards. Takes you right to Oxford Centre. Wow. Still going on about them eggs, are you? No, I just... I can't believe my luck lately. Well, before you go off, himself left instructions for you on the door to the basement. Himself? Oh, <laughs> I mean Dr. Stiles, of course. He's working down in the lab this morning, doesn't want to be disturbed. Now, I know you must have a question or two. Don't be shy about asking, Samantha. It's Sam, but funny. I don't remember telling you my name last night. There was a tag on your backpack when I washed your clothes. You really should update it to your Oxford address, dear. Wouldn't do having someone ship it back to the States if you lost it, now would it? <laughs> oh, and I'm Mrs Dalton. I did tell you, but I suspect you were half asleep at the time. You know, before I came to Oxford, I would have never imagined there was so much uninhabited countryside so nearby. Oh, there's plenty of country around here. And thank heavens for it. <laughs> How long does the bus take to get into Oxford Centre? 30 minutes, like. Makes a lot of stops on the way. By the by, what college are you in? Did the student employment office say it was St Edmund Hall? Or am I thinking of something else? Mm, it is St Edmund Hall. Nice college from what I've heard. Hmm. How far are we from London? London? Ooh. Hour and a half, I'd say. Car or train would run you about the same. Of course, you'd never catch me driving in London. Oh, not for a million pounds. That's not bad. Far enough away to be grateful, not so far as to be sorry. <laughs> or so the locals say. I saw a plaque by the door. Center for Cognitive Abnormality Research? What does that mean, exactly? The centre was Dr Stiles' idea. He started it with his friend, Dr Hellborn. How excited they were. It was busy, too. Oh, starting to be. Then something happened and... Well, he closed it. But what does that mean? Cognitive abnormality. Didn't that school tell you anything? Dr. Stiles worked with patients who had strokes or brain injuries and the like. Always said those kinds of cases helped him understand the workings of the brain better than looking at a healthy one. He's retired now? 
Oh, you could say that. Hasn't seen patients in years. Who all lives here? Lord, it must seem a big old empty place to you. Sometimes I forget. It's only himself and me. Just two people? In this huge old house? He can't abide company. Look, he can be difficult. I'll never say otherwise. But no matter what you've heard over there at that university, don't believe it. All I ask is that you make up your own mind. If you can do that and not be faint of heart, you'll be all right. OK. But whatever you do, don't mention the accident. I noticed the painting on the stairway. Beautiful girl. Is that Dr. Stiles' daughter? If you want to get along in this house, that's the sort of thing you don't ask. Ever. Oh, right. Sorry. So, what exactly does Dr. Stiles' assistant do around here? I mean, as you see it. Never had one before. I'm sure they told you at the student employment office. It's mainly paperwork he wants done. Files sorted, computer work, things of that sort. You should have plenty of time to keep up with your studies. I told him there's no use sending over a medical student. He'd never let you touch his actual work. I take it you're not in the sciences. Was it the tattoos that gave me away? No offence, dear. <laughs> what is it that you study? Um, English lit. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Now, I wanted to ask, will you be wanting the room or will you be staying at the university? The room? The room you were in last night. It's yours whenever you want it. It's empty otherwise, isn't it? Tempting. Meals too. If you're late, I'll leave your dinner in the fridge. I'm sure a girl like you knows how to use a microwave. <laughs> sure. I know they told me this at university, but I'm not sure I remember it correctly. Besides the room and board, the position pays... Well, I never. <laughs> Catch a fever last night, did you? <laughs> I'd have thought that would be the first thing on a student's mind. Sure, but I was looking at a whole list of available jobs, and I'm afraid I might be confusing them. Fifty pounds. Right, that's what I thought. Thanks. Someone modernized an old fireplace. Cool idea. They're well stocked for just two people. I suppose there must have been a lot more living here once upon a time. That calendar is out of date. It's a card for a psychologist. Now that's a phone number I'd have handy. You never know when you'll go stark raving mad. Oxford Police Department. Gee, that's reassuring. My window overlooks trees at the side of the house. I could climb down if ever I need to escape in a hurry. There. Now it's practically home, isn't it? Mom and Dad. It's the only picture I have with me. Hey, looks like we might hang out here a while after all. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Wish me luck, Bunny. Okay, okay. I know, you hate it when I call you that.
now that I know the clinic doesn't see patients anymore, this is even creepier. Nice thing to have in your living room. I know absolutely nothing about neurobiology. Might be interesting to learn, though. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Well, he's a charmer. Don't get too comfortable, Houdini. This shouldn't be too hard. Students always need money, right? I have a problem. Dr. Stiles asked me to leave my cell phone number with you, but I don't have one. Oh, take mine. My sister's the only one who ever calls me on it, and she's on holiday. Are you sure? Thank you. I had one, but there was this incident with a ground squirrel. Ugly. They could be nasty blighters, can't they? She seems nice enough, but you never can tell. So this is Oxford. Not bad. I need to line up those students for the experiment. But while I'm here, I really want to snoop around. See if I can find any reference to the Daedalus Club here in Oxford. Cool, a magic shop. The only thing that differentiates this fake blood from real blood is the fact that it's easier to wash out. Any text written with this ink will disappear within a few minutes. The sides of this cube can be swapped by pressing a button to match your prediction. Triggering the invisible wires coming with the device will trigger the flash powder and cast a bright flash of light. This discrete device will play the associated sound when pressing the button on its remote controller. The contents of this file will switch from liquid to solid state when salt is added. Useful adhesive to fix wigs, beards, and other costume prosthetics. A little switch on the back of the box allows you to control whether the devil pops out or not. The money put into the coin slot disappears in a hidden compartment. Don't forget to give the money back afterwards. Worn over your own thumb and fixed with spirit gum, it is unnoticeable. He doesn't look like Harry Houdini. You must be 21. It's the Daedalus Club logo. Hmm. Is that really wise, I wonder? Hi. This is a Daedalus Club puzzle box, isn't it? Is it? My, my. What a mystery. Can I be of assistance, young lady? I hope so. That is a Daedalus Club puzzle box, isn't it? I recognize the club logo. Do you? And what would an American like you know about the Daedalus Club? I've been in Europe for almost two years now. 
I know a lot of street magicians on the continent. Ah, I thought you had the look. Watch carefully. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Very nice, my dear. My name is Mephistopheles. And who are you? Samantha Everett. Sam. But my stage name is Lady Byron. Nope. Never heard of you. Well, I haven't been in England long. So about the Daedalus Club. I know they have a dinner club in London. Are they here in Oxford, too? Do they run this shop? As in the Roman times, we are merely a lowly outpost, and not the thing itself. I heard they run public games, riddles, and scavenger hunts. That kind of thing. Is that what the box is? A public game? They might put those in any friendly establishment. They might. You're curious to know what I know about the Daedalus Club. Oh, very. Will you indulge an old man? I worked with the great Scarpelli in Rome last summer. He told me a lot. The great Scarpelli? Red-haired, garlic-breathed old con man who favors chickens in his act. That's him. He's very talented, you know. Oh, I know. He said it's the most secret club for magicians and illusionists on Earth. All the great masters belong to it. Do they? And what other morsels did he divulge? To become a member, you have to pull off a grand game, like a major public illusion or legendary con. He's worked on one for several years, but hasn't perfected it yet. Ah, a common fate, I'm afraid. But one must always start somewhere, Miss Everett. And a good place might be that box. Yes, I believe you're right. Thank you. Oh, now I get it. It looks like a younger Mephistopheles. Is that a joke? Or is Mephistopheles more famous than I thought? Or more conceited? Twenty-one. That did it. This is a Daedalus Club riddle. My first one. The riddle says something about the scholar's heart. Is that a particular part of Oxford? I'm not familiar with the city. Hmm. I would take that to mean the heart of the university, which is where you are right now. But I wouldn't depend on my help if I were you. I'm a miser with it, for one thing. And if you got aid, how would you know if you were worthy of the game? And the game of you. I didn't. Right. Never mind. What happens if I win the game? What happens? Only one way to find out. Queen and High Streets. The riddle says, high above high, and reigning over queen. Maybe the spot I'm looking for is around here. Carfax Tower is high above High Street, and reigns over Queen Street. Clever! Pretty nice view up here. There's a little box attached to the wall. The box has a Daedalus Club logo. I need to do something with this box, but I don't know what. Looks like the bottom might come off. But how? Maybe it has something to do with those vents.
fire. It worked. It's a piece of gold. And the second paper looks like a coat of arms. Maybe it's a clue to the next location. Hmm. I bet it's a clue to a new location. I wonder where I could find a reference to the Oxford coats of arms. Each college has its own coat of arms. Classy. That's it. Christchurch College. It's a naked guy with wings on his hat. I think it's a statue of Mercury, the Roman messenger. I don't see anything in the water. There's something here. It's definitely a Daedalus Club box. It has their logo, but how do I open it? That paper on the top, it must be related to the opening mechanism. There's no problem finding water around here, if I need it. It worked! That must be a clue to the next location. It has the Christchurch coat of arms in it, so it must be around here somewhere. It's another piece of the ideogram. There's a cathedral and a dining hall inside, apparently. I don't need to go in there right now. It says there's a garden on the right, too. There's a big meadow out that way. I don't have time for a stroll at the moment. I guess I'd better look around more closely. Looks like normal plant stuff to me. Hmm. Looks like that dirt has been freshly dug. That flag has the Daedalus Club logo on it. I think there's something down there. It's a piece of the ideogram and a beer coaster. The beer coaster must be a clue to the next location. This has to be a clue to the next location. I guess it means I'm looking for a pub, but which one? Looking for a pub, and Windy Dog does go with the theme of the riddle. I've already done fire, water, and earth, so wind would be next, but they're closed. I may have to finish this riddle tomorrow. Interesting outfit. Something tells me he's not just hanging out there for his health.
Your ID, please. Driver's license? Student ID. Oh, that. I left it in my room. Sorry. Not so forced. Them's the rules and there's the street. Have a nice day. Thanks. Hello, miss. You won't want to miss this. Easy money for a few hours of rest and relaxation. I can sign you up right now. Dr. Stiles, are you insane? Hey, you're losing a paper. What? Take a look. If you're free tonight, it's just an easy few hours for 15 pounds. Every student needs money, right? This is like taking candy from a baby, my friend. <laughs> oh, oh, this is great. Brilliant. What do you mean? Oh, th this is a joke, right? Styles? Experiment? No, it's 15 pounds. What's so funny about that? Oh, you're serious. I guess it takes a freak to work for a freak. Good day. Great. It appears I'm working for Dracula. Nice. What is it? Chance of a lifetime. Or, at the very least, the most fun you've ever had in a straitjacket. <laughs> Just a little neurobiology humor there. <laughs> Not bloody likely. Look, you won't find anyone stupid enough to do an experiment with styles, I guarantee it. Oh yeah? There's got to be somebody stupid enough in Oxford. Or maybe not. Well, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Sorry, Houdini. I tried. First year student orientation party at St. Edmund's Quad. It's today. Freshman. Oh, come on, what do you want, blood? I told you I'd delete your scene. And I'm supposed to trust you. Please, I'm whining now, I'm whimpering, you're killing me here. Maybe you'll think twice next time. I've nothing more to say to you. Hmm, no doubt I'm in the right place. Let's hope I can recruit enough rookies. If I have to pick a side, the boy looks like the easier mark. I should try him first. Hey, hi. Sorry to bother you, but I overheard your accent. You're an American? Yeah. Me too. I'm Sam from DC. I'm Harv, Harvey Kinderman, the Big Apple. You don't look American, you know. Maybe French. What? Oh, come on. There are a lot of people like me in New York. I guess. Those French are everywhere. <laughs> I'm glad to see you still have your sense of humor. I noticed you were fighting with your girlfriend. Girlfriend? President of the Lynch Harvey Kinderman Club is more like it. You haven't been here long enough to get into trouble, have you? Are you kidding? I can get people to hate me in under 10 seconds flat. That girl, for instance, Lisa, she loathes me to the point of breaking into my room and deleting my latest film from my computer. And she took the only hard copy I had, a Kinderman masterpiece. Gone. And I've known her less than two weeks. I'm telling you, it's a gift. Why would Lisa do something like that? No reason on God's earth. Hmm. She's in the film, right? What'd you get her doing? Well, it was uh, a commode soliloquy. Artistic truth, man. I mean, the film's about superficiality and how we're all really just flesh and blood underneath all the glamour. I'll buy that, but I wouldn't if I were Lisa. She didn't. She's pretty much being a major B on toast. Does Lisa have your movie with her? Yeah, it's in that Godzilla purse of hers. 
I would have kicked her shins and run with it, but then she'd have to hurt me. Is it on DVD? The Super 8, why? Do you have a spare Super 8 film cartridge with you? Uh, yeah. Again, why? Just weigh my options. You have options? Wow, can I have some? I'm fresh out. And what are you studying, Harv? Technically? Well, technically, I'm in the international law program. But not really? No, I am. It's just, you know how you can get splinters under your nail and it bleeds and stuff under there and it hurts so bad you just want to hit something? Law is kind of like that for me. And you're studying it. Why? My dad. He has this high hopes thing. Talk about guilt. But hey, it's fine. I'm in England and I wanted a chance to check out British filmmakers, so it works. Mostly. Geez, suck it up and tell him, Hart. It's your life. Yeah, thanks. I'll get right on that. Say, I bet you could use some extra cash. You know, for film or production costs or whatever. What's the catch? My prof has this little experiment going on tonight. It's, um, a neurobiology thing. Easy as pie, and it pays 15 pounds for just a few hours of work. Boy, have you got the wrong guy. I won't even go to the dentist, and the last time I had blood drawn, they had to call in the National Guard. I don't want anything to do with needles, anything needle-like, or anything that involves putting anything small and shiny anywhere close to my skin. Even jewelry makes me nervous. <sighs> All right. How badly do you want that movie back, Kinderman? You shouldn't call me by my last name. It turns me on. Listen, if you do this experiment for me tonight, I'll get your cartridge back. What is this, Torture Harvey Day? Do I get my choice of the guillotine or the rope? Is that it? Stop being a wuss. This thing tonight isn't gonna hurt or anything. Besides, I thought your film was Orwellian. Do you want to be talking about it at the age of 50 in the actor studio as your lost masterpiece? Sheesh, turn the screws. All right, all right. But what are you planning to do? Trust me, she won't feel a thing. Give me the spare cartridge. This ought to be interesting. Yeah, I can take her down, no problem. But first, I need to pick the right trick. Yes, that should work. Hi. I saw you talking to Harvey Kinderman. I wanted to warn you about him. Seriously. You're a little late. You're joking. Did he film you? As a matter of fact, he did. You don't mean to say he filmed you too? Yeah. I was at a party a couple of nights ago, and I was feeling sick, so I went outside to, you know, be sick. I looked up, and that degenerate was filming me, puking, in the bushes. He's a worm. I'm glad I'm making him suffer. You are? How? I've got the film he took of me, and it's the only copy, too. I made sure of that. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I deleted it from his computer myself. Are you sure you got the right cartridge, though? I was in his room looking for mine, but there was so much crap everywhere. Most of the tapes weren't even labeled. I bet you didn't get the right one. I have the cartridge! This is the name of the film he said he was making. It's on the label. Can I see? Careful with that. You know what I'd do if I were you? See that barrel over there? What are you? Wait a minute. minute. Now you'll be sure that no one will ever see it. What a nerve. Americans. Tell me you didn't just burn my film. 
this is it? What are you, like the amazing Kreskin or something? I never saw you make the switcheroo. Yeah, forget it. But don't forget about tonight. You promised. I'll be there, never fear. Hey, I got my film back. And the best part is, Lisa thinks it's destroyed. <laughs> It's a barrel of burning leaves. Hmm. That's a smell second only to new car leather. And maybe chocolate. She looks like the timid type. That could work. May I hang around? I'm waiting on a call. Oh, sure. Should I... Do you want me to leave? No. God, no. You were here first. Looks like I missed the party. Did you get to meet a lot of people? Oh, I just came out to get a little sun. I'm not a first year. Oh, well, I'm Sam. Samantha Everett. Angela Mulholland. What are you studying? Uh, nursing. You don't sound very sure. I've changed my focus a few times, but I do want to go into medicine. I want to help people. What about you? Me? English lit. I used to be in that department. I know all the professors here. Is there anything you'd like to know? Not right now, no. But if I think of something, I'll be sure to look you up. I like your accent. Are you Scottish? Yes. Well, I grew up on an island in Scotland. An island? Wasn't it claustrophobic? Not at all. It's a big island. I could ride my bike around it, but it took hours. And in the autumn, like now, the leaves were so bright red and gold. You could ride your bike and the tyres would crunch through them and make the best sound in the world. From the cliffs, the sea looked like wild horses. My father always said that. <laughs> Sounds nice. I don't really have any place like that. Home, I mean. Sorry. I don't know why I said all that. I'm... I do need to finish this chapter. Do you go home a lot? Sounds like you miss it. I do. Do you have a lot of family there? Oh, yes. Lots. How did you end up at Oxford? I got a scholarship. Lucky. Oh, it wasn't luck. It was fate. You know, sometimes things happen and it's like a sign that you should do something. Sometimes you don't even have a choice. Oh, yeah, fate. I believe in that. Totally. Angela seems ripe for something. But which trick? That payphone might come in handy. I'll need to get the number off it. There. I put the number into my cell phone memory. It should be dialed automatically if I press dial. I need to get my cell phone set up before I can do the trick. That phone is about to ring. I can feel it. Hello? This is Sam Everett. Terrific. Thank you so much. I'll see you tonight.
How did you know the phone would ring just now? Oh, you know. Just this little twinge I get when something really big is about to happen. But... That was a call I've been waiting on. It's about this exciting research project. Everyone in Oxford would want to do it if they knew about it. Fortunately, nobody does. It pays well, too. I'm very happy for you. But do you really get premonitions? No. Just, you know, when fate's involved. The way you said? Anyway, this experiment is being done by a famous neurobiologist. I've played with the idea of going into medicine someday, so I wanted to see a clinical experiment firsthand. Angela? Famous neurobiologist? Who? He's a professor. Um, Dr. Stiles. He's really amazing. World famous. There are some stupid rumors about him. So not true. Anyway, this is a great research project, and such a valuable experience, especially if you're going into medicine. Know what I mean? I think there might be a slot left for another volunteer. You could do it with me if you want. It would be fun. Could I? Sure. Tonight if you want. It's the first session. Are you sure? Do you need to call them and ask? No. He mentioned that they need a few more volunteers. I'll call and let them know you're coming. Thank you, Sam. I'll see you then. No problem. Getting her to join was easier than I expected. Weird, but easy. Apparently, she thinks she's on the French Riviera. Not really my type, but beggars can't be choosers. Hi. It's a good day for the sun thing. Oh, a diversion. Thank God. I was about to die of boredom. I'm Helena. Sam, Antha, or just Sam is fine too. You're a student here? You don't look like one. Of course I am. Are you? For two glorious weeks now. Time of my life. Where are you from, Helena? You don't sound British. God, not remotely. I'm from a tiny little country. You wouldn't have heard of it. I wouldn't have heard of your country? Trust me. What are you studying? Art history, which isn't horrible. I do have an interest in the subject. Antiques mostly, and paintings. That's why Papa sent me here. He said if I was going to spend money, I should at least know what I'm buying. Gee, sounds rough. You have no idea. Care for a vodka and soda? I can run up to my room and whip up another one. Um, tempting, but no. Maybe later. Suit yourself. If you're really bored, why don't you come with me tonight? To do what? I'm going to a psych experiment. Pretty amusing, actually. Very Dr. Strange Love. Not for me. I have plans for this body of mine, and no doctor's going to get his greedy little hands on it. It's just a psych thing. I'm sure Dr. Stiles won't do any permanent damage. I'm not interested. I take it you don't like Oxford? God, no. Papa insisted. He thinks I can't possibly get into trouble here. Well, I thought I'd show him. But now that I'm here, I think he might actually be right. What a pedestrian snore. You look like someone who knows how to party. Where do you go? Haven't found much of a scene yet. Mostly pubs with fish and chips. A snore like you... What is it? Well, the one thing that can be said about Oxford is it has some delicious men. That is the plat du Résistance. Nice. Nice? Darling, that prime specimen is Charles Ettington. I've tried to talk to him a few times, but he's mortally shy. I think he might even be a virgin. You think? Charles Eddington will be at this experiment I'm going to tonight. You're lying. Not. Why would he be in this psych experiment? I don't know. Maybe he needs money. Or maybe he's interested in neurobiology. You'd have to ask him. I doubt Charles Eddington needs money. In fact... I don't believe you even know him. We'll see about that, won't we? 
Helen is about to learn that you never issue Sam Everett a direct challenge. Mind if I hang around? I was supposed to meet a friend here. Uh, well... The letter on top is from Gertrude Eddington. I bet that's his mother. Homer's Iliad. Did you get mail from home? Sorry. It's just that I've been expecting a letter from my mom for days. I'm beginning to think the Oxford Post is eating it. No. I've been here for two weeks, and I still haven't received a letter from my mom. She promised to write all the time. It doesn't take that long for stuff to get here from the U.S., does it? Don't know. Never got anything from there. Uh, of course not. Duh, I'm sorry. Ragging on like a total loser. I get mail every day. My mum, she writes to me every day. No way. God, you're lucky. I miss my mom so much. So how come you haven't opened it yet? Uh, mum and I always ate dinner together, so I like to read it then. Aww, isn't that sweet? Mum and I love to ride bikes together. But reading her letters on a bike probably wouldn't be the best idea. <laughs> I see you're reading the Iliad. The Iliad and the Odyssey are my favorite ones. You've read the Iliad? Yeah, but I like the Odyssey best. I love the gods and their infighting. Total soap opera. But my favorite part is where Odysseus comes home and Penelope has all those suitors, and you're just waiting for him to kick some serious tail. My favorite part is the Cyclops. I like the way they tie themselves under the sheep to escape. I love that part. Can you believe those were the first novels ever written? And Homer still beats the crap out of anything Hollywood has put out? In my humble opinion. Absolutely. What's even more amazing is that he recited it from memory. Can you imagine hearing him do that? That would be amazing. Wow. Well, I'd uh, better get back to it. Listen, there's something you might be interested in. It's not for everyone, but since you like Homer, I've gotten into a psych experiment that's being done by one of the Oxford neurobiologists. It's really fascinating and it pays cash. That would be interesting, but I'd need to check with my mum. She calls me on Saturdays. I could talk to her about it then. But this starts tonight. Then I can't. I couldn't do something like that without talking to her. Anyway, I'm sure they'll do it again. Oh no, Dr. Stiles is a really famous neurobiologist and he almost never does this kind of thing. Oh, it will be so educational. I'm sure your mother would love for you to have an experience like this. That's what she sent you here for, isn't it? I can't without talking to her, sorry. Okay, no big deal. This one is tough. I'll have to find a really good trick. I can only set up the first part of the trick to get the letter for now. Well, you know what they say. Fluffy white clouds means it's a beautiful day to fly a kite. I don't see any kites. <laughs> it's just an expression. See you later, Homer. I'll need to find something to help me open this without it looking like I've opened it. Ouch! Hot! Charles's mother certainly is involved. Must be nice to have someone who actually gives a crap. Convenient of her to include a health fair flyer. That works.
Now I can seal it and it's ready to go. Now I can finish the trick and put the letter back. Hey, Homer! Do you happen to know if that payphone over there works for international calls? I was thinking about calling my mom. Um, couldn't say. That's all right. I'll go check. See ya. I'm pretty sure he'll take the bait and show up tonight. At least I hope so. Damn it. What's your secret? I haven't been able to get as much as a hello out of the boy. And there you are, chatting away. Well, you know, you get really close to people when you work together. But you have to be gentle with Charles. He's so inexperienced. You are diabolical. I know. So are you coming tonight, or do I have Charles all to myself? Funny thing about virginity, it's such a temporary state. Satan incarnate. Are you sure this is safe? Would I steer you wrong? All right, I'll be there. Oh, what fun. Hello? Get back here immediately. You're late. Uh, maybe you have the wrong person. This is not normally my phone. I know exactly who this is. We have a lot to do to prepare for tonight. Get back here at once. Dr. Stiles? Um, look, I've got four people, but I still need two more. If you give me an hour. You found four volunteers? Yes, it wasn't easy. That's enough. I had another student called to volunteer today, and you'll be the sixth. A what? Now get back here at once. Wonderful. Now instead of finding suckers, I am one. Okay, so I'm a little bit freaked here. Damn all those stupid stories. If he's some kind of monster, I can just leave, right? Right. I'm a fast runner. Come on, Samantha, suck it up. Dr. Stiles? Didn't your mother tell you it's not polite to stare? I'm oh, sorry. The stairs are behind you. Leave now if you can't do better than that. No, I thought you'd be old or something. Mrs. Dalton said... Uh, never mind. You kept me waiting. Bad way to start your tenure here, Miss... What the hell is your name, anyway? Sam Everett. What the hell is yours? I'll take that as a rhetorical question. If you don't know who you're working for, you really are a fool. What's your area of study? English lit. <laughs> Appropriately worthless. Yeah, well, I considered studying acts of war, but I failed the Howitzer's test. That gets a lot of freshmen, I'm told. Where did you get this? A jumble sale in a village outside Liverpool. I like old things. Why? My mother wore a necklace identical to this one. It was probably given to charity after her death. 
How bizarre. I've had to make most of the preparation myself. That's why I pay you, because your time can be wasted on menial tasks mine can't. Next time, come when I ask, or don't bother showing up at all. Next time? So I have the job? As if I have nothing better to do than to try out new assistants. In that case, I'd like a room, board, and a hundred pounds a week. First week paid in advance. Are you quite insane? You'll practically have me full time since I'll be living here. You can run me ragged. Menially speaking. Besides, you don't have time to look for someone else. Make these beds. The linens are on the counter. I'll return at a quarter to. When the students arrive, make sure they know what to expect before bringing them down here. But you haven't told me anything about tonight. Inform them about me. Do we get a last request, Doc? How about an appeal? I have a wife and kids to support, you know. <laughs> okay, not really, but uh, I have a, a grandmother who liked me once. Yeah, it was 1989. Sit still. This isn't going to hurt. These machines are about as painful as x-rays and far less carcinogenic. I trust you, Dr. Stiles. Good. This will require nothing from any of you except a bit of imagination. Now... I want you to relax. Relax, lay back, and close your eyes. You're not going to fall asleep, but you will be deeply, deeply relaxed. Let go of all thoughts, all tensions. Let go of everything but the sound of my voice. You're standing in a field, and your eyes are closed. It's night, and the air is chilly. You're a little cold in the athletic suit you have on, but you know you'll be warming up soon. You smell freshly mown grass on the night breeze. Your eyes remain closed as you reach up in a stretch. Up and up, fingers reaching for the sky. You feel the pull all the way down your arms, your sides, your legs, all the way to your toes. Take a deep breath of cold air and push higher. Hold it and exhale. Swing your arms down. Relax. In a moment, you will open your eyes and see that you are at Horsepath Track. You came here for a night run. Your muscles are in need of a run, and you're looking forward to this immensely. When you open your eyes, you will see that it is a clear night. The field is lit with incandescent light from the lampposts, and the track is a dark, muddy red. You have the entire place to yourself now. In your mind, open your eyes and begin, very slowly at first, very easily, to run. That experiment made me so relaxed. I slept like a log. That bed doesn't suck either. Ah, oh, you're up. I was about to go and wake you. Good morning, Mrs. Dalton. Smells wonderful. So, you're still here then? Still here. You got on all right with Dr. Stiles? He's a toad, but I've dealt with worse. It's fine. Glad I am to hear it. He needs things done, and seems like you could use the job. Why? Did he say something about me? Well, not to me. He's not even up yet. He doesn't sleep at night, you know. Sometimes I don't see a lick of him before noon. Sorry to hear that. Did he leave instructions for me? Well, he might have done down in the lab. 
Oh, and someone left this paper on the step this morning. Must have been a mistake. We don't take a paper. You have it if you like. Thanks. Mmm, that was delicious. 